You've tackled numerous climbs. I have. At a respectable pace. Ah, oh, thanks. But now you want to go faster. I do. There's no getting around the suffering, I'm afraid. Oh. But the satisfaction you'll get will be well worth it. And here's how. Cue montage. Saving weight from your bike by buying lighter wheels or components can make a difference to how fast you can climb. But if your bike's already as light as you can afford, then actually you can look at your own body weight because often there can be some big gains to be made by losing a bit of weight. Yeah, put simply, if you're serious about climbing faster, then this, alongside improving your power of course, is something you need to focus on. Because just losing a couple of kilograms of body weight can have a massive difference. It's simple physics. Power to weight ratio is the holy grail of cycling. It effectively determines how fast you can ride up hills. The higher your power to weight ratio, the more efficient you'll be when climbing, and therefore, the faster you will go. Now that's calculated by dividing your body weight in kilograms into your average sustainable power for an hour in watts. So if you can put out 300 watts in an hour and your body weight is 70 kilograms, that works out as... About 4.28, I think. Yeah, 4.28. Thanks very much, Simon. But to put it into a little bit of perspective, an elite professional will have a power to weight ratio of between 5 and 6 watts per kilogram, and even more for a Grand Tour winner. Your aim should probably be to find the right balance between power and weight, though, because if you lose too much weight, you can actually just end up going slower. Now, that right balance is normally called your ideal racing weight, although well, you don't actually have to race in order to benefit from having a higher power to weight ratio. I wonder who's got the best power to weight out of these two. I reckon I've got a good idea. The more you climb, the more your body will get used to the unique demands of this sort of effort. Now different muscle groups are recruited as soon as the road starts to pitch upwards. So the more that you ride, the more you're efficient your body will become. Now there's a real skill and technique into pacing your effort on long climbs. It's very difficult to replicate elsewhere. So it's simple, the more you climb, the better you will become. Yeah, so a surefire way of climbing more is to incorporate it into your training. And a really good idea is to find a long climb that you're familiar with and time yourself to the top, or if you've got a power meter, record your average power. Because then that can serve as a benchmark for all future efforts up there. So it'll be a great indicator of how fit you are. And it can also be a really good motivator if you see your times plummet and your power soar. I'm off, Si. So so i soaring. Look at that. Matt, you look amazing! Knowing in detail the nature of a long climb will help you immensely when it comes to measuring and pacing your efforts. That's why we see so many of the professional riders heading out into the mountains to recon the climbs ahead of the Grand Tours. You can get so much information. The false flats, when to recover, when the wind plays a part, and more importantly, when the road pitches up. And it's there where you need to know to attack or whether to knock it back and not to put yourself in the red. Knowledge is power. A light bike, an optimised power to weight ratio, and even knowing the climb are all going to be worthless if you don't get your pacing strategy right. So if you start a long climb too hard, then you could end up going into the red this is where you're in oxygen debt, and that is really hard to recover from, I meaning that you end up going a lot slower. Yeah, the key to riding a long climb fast is to settle into an uncomfortable but sustainable rhythm. Now, we never said this was going to be easy. So first off, make sure that your breathing is deep and that you're in control. And secondly, look at your gearing. You don't want to be spinning too high a gear, but also, you don't want to be laboring. So select a gear that you can manageably maintain. So then settle in to that nice even rhythm until you get to about halfway or two thirds of the way 
up the climb. And it's then, if you've got the energy, you can start to increase things a little before squeezing out the last few drops of energy over the last couple of minutes. Now this kind of riding is also going to have serious mental as well as physical demands. So you're going to need the ability to suffer and tolerate pain. But you might find a little tip to help you out is to break a climb down into more manageable chunks. So a 14k climb is going to be daunting no matter who you are. But four three and a half k climbs might just make it seem that a bit more achievable. Yeah, and if numbers aren't your thing, try dividing up the climb by using different sorts of landmarks on the way up. The most common technique for most riders on long climbs is to sit firmly in the saddle for the vast majority of the climb. Now this will depend, of course, on the rider, on their particular riding style, for example. Let's take Alberto Contador, who for the majority of a climb will actually ride out of the saddle. But the preferred method for most people is to sit down. It's far more efficient as it uses less, well, muscle groups. Yeah, so when you're sat in the saddle, try to keep your upper body as relaxed as possible and keep it completely still. It takes time to become proficient at this, but keep practicing and it'll soon become second nature. Because you see, if you start moving around, and bobbing, you're just wasting energy. So sit up, relax, concentrate on your breathing, and trying to find that sustainable rhythm. And riding out of the saddle is great for accelerating and also for getting over those steep, nasty sections of the climb, especially hairpins. And it's also very good if you're suffering from a little bit of lower back fatigue, as it allows you to stretch things out. But of the utmost importance is finding what works for you, because comfort, believe you me, is everything. So make sure you've got the ideal pacing strategy, think about weight, ride lots and lots of long hills, and focus on your technique. Anything else? Yeah. Don't forget to suffer. No okay. matter how fit you get, climbing fast always hurts. Lots of suffering. If you want to see someone really hurting, why not check out just up there actually, because Tom Last really does know how to suffer, and there's a great video with him gurning doing just that. Or to train for long climbs, which is very important, click just there. And subscribe to GCN. Click on the globe.